that's great. Um, okay, so I want to talk about sort of fallacies, so fallacious um, kind of reasoning and critical thinking. So what constitutes a fallacy in, philosoph in philosophical terms? And why is it important to recognize fallacious reasoning to foster critical thinking skills? Yeah, I mean, uh, fallacy is basically a, th a thought pattern that appears cogent, but isn't, right? Or often to many people appears cogent, like appears to support some conclusion, but doesn't really. Um, more generally, people use it just for um, systematically misleading ways of thinking. Okay, so now, so traditionally, a fallacy is supposed to be an argument, but sometimes people use it more broadly, um, you know, just to refer to other defects, <laughs> defects in the way people form beliefs. Um, okay, so you know, and and why is it important to know about them? Because there's a lot of them, and so, um, so you probably have a bunch of false beliefs because you've probably fallen prey to a bunch of fallacies. So you know, like if you care about the truth. Um, identifying the fallacies makes you less susceptible to them, right? Okay. Uh, and like, usually if somebody identifies a fallacy, you can immediately see that it was a fallacy. Um, that doesn't mean that you wouldn't have committed it though. So, okay. You know, until somebody points it out. All right. So, you know, like obvious things are, um, the argument ad hominem, right? Which is, um, by the way, is not just a name for insulting people. Rather, um, it refers to incorrectly drawing conclusions from, you know, personal characteristics of a person. Like you think that the thing a person is saying is false because they're a bad person. Right. And then, so, right. So like the way, the way the fallacy would go in conversation is, you know, I would say, well, you know, according to so-and-so this happened. And then you say, yeah, but so-and-so is bad. And then you start saying bad things about them. Right. But that doesn't mean that what they said was false. Right. Okay. So like, uh, I think, you know, some contemporary examples not to get, um, too political, but um, you remember, remember when um, Donald Trump was accused of um, trying to get Ukraine to interfere in our elections to dig up dirt on Joe Biden. Okay, and his primary response to that is, was to attack the whistleblower. Right? You notice how that works. So, like, so he he also claimed that the call was perfect and whatever. Okay, but a big part of his response was. Whoever's accusing me, who's anonymous, by the way, is a bad person. <laughs> They're another never Trumper, or it's politically motivated, whatever. Okay, now for balance, I have to mention that, of course, this also works on the other side. Okay, so like in the recent story of the Harvard president, Claudine Gay, who was, um, you know, she had to resign because of plagiarism as well as her um, inadequate testimony before Congress, right? Um, I think the primary defense of her was, oh, the attacks on her are politically motivated. Okay, like, you know, it's just, it's a bunch of right wing ideologues, a bunch of MAGA ideologues who are attacking Claudine Gay and they're bad people. <laughs> okay, but anyway, the thing is, in both of these cases, that's irrelevant. So what? Because they're not on trial. <laughs> or, you know, like, you know, if, if you're trying to decide whether Claudine Gay should step down, you're not trying to decide whether MAGA Republicans should be punished for something. Maybe they should. But that's not the question. So it's completely irrelevant, right? And whether they were politically motivated is not what matters. What matters is, is it true? Did she actually plagiarize this stuff? Okay. And similarly with the Trump case, it doesn't matter if the, you know, the, the whistleblower could be a communist. He could be a serial killer for all I care. No, I mean, I want him in prison if he's a serial killer, but that doesn't mean that Trump should get off, right? So anyway, okay. Anyway, that, so that was sort of like about the ad hominem. Um, these are some some other things. Um, people give anecdotal arguments a lot. Like you're trying to support a generalization, then you come up with a couple of examples, and it's usually examples that happened in the news recently. And why is that not a good way of reasoning? Um, because the anecdotes are usually not a random sample. And they're not a large sample either. Okay. So, you know, you give a couple of examples. So it could easily be just by chance, you know, pick the, you pick the couple of cases in which this thing is true. But then the other thing is, um, uh, you know, they're usually cherry picked. The person who's giving the example is not just randomly picking. Okay. So, um, okay. And then, so, you know, the, the better way of forming beliefs is um, trying to find the statistics. Right. So like, okay, you're saying, um, you know, I wonder if we should have more gun control laws in the country. And then you start talking about um, particular cases of shootings. Well, that's, that's not very relevant, right? 
because actually every year there's like thousands, you know, whatever, 12,000, 16,000 or something like that of homicides. So like what happened in the most recent thing that occurred on the news where like three people were shot is not like that shouldn't be the basis for a policy. You should look at what's happening in most of the thousands and thousands of cases. Right? So anyway, okay. Um, another thing, um, but, you know, related to this is um, when people are trying to decide, when people are trying to estimate how common something is, um, they think about like, they, they use how easy it is to think of examples as a heuristic for estimating how common it is. Okay. So you're like, um, you know, I wonder how common it is for um, white police officers to kill black suspects. And then, so you just start thinking, in what cases can I think of in the news? And you're like, oh yeah, there's like a George Floyd, there's Eric Garner, there's Breonna Taylor, there's uh, um, Jacob Blake. Okay, so I just thought of four examples. Those were all in the news. Okay, I wonder how common it is for them to shoot white people. I can't think of any examples. So it must be that it's more common to shoot black people. Okay, so anyway, now I don't know if people would, I don't know if people would think that explicitly but they would just sort of, they would come away with the impression that one of these things is much more common than the other because they can think of examples. But that's not a good way of forming beliefs because the reason why you can think of examples is not necessarily that it's more common, right? And in this case, as a matter of fact, it's not, right? Uh, it's more common for them to shoot white people. It's just less common for the media to report it, right? But anyway, okay. Um, and then, you know, there's a couple of things that are not exactly fallacies but um, there are ways that people go wrong. So um, a lot of people are dogmatic, right? And also a lot of people are sort of like hair trigger belief formers, right? That is, they assume things. If something seems kind of plausible to you, you just assume that it's true. And so like we form beliefs on the basis of not enough information, right? Okay, so like, um, you know, and there, and there are studies um, in psychology of this sort of thing. So like, this is an example, which is more common, homicide or suicide? Okay. And, you know, most people think homicide is more common, but what's the basis for that? Um, okay. There's not really, <laughs> it's not really basic. I mean, it's basically that, well, I can, I've heard of, I've heard about homicides on the news more often than suicides. Right. Also, you might think to yourself, like most people would think to themselves, you know, I would never want to kill myself, but sometimes I feel like killing other people. <laughs> sometimes I feel really mad at other people, but I don't feel mad at myself. So it must be more common. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, of course, you know, from the fact that I'm giving this example, that it's not true, right? Suicide is much more common than homicide. All right. So anyway, don't assume, right? When you assume factual matters like that, it's very common that you're wrong, right? A lot more common than you would think. If you enjoyed this clip, then head on over to Locals to access the full conversation right now. Supporters can access the video version and everyone can access the audio only version of the conversation. I'll see you over there.